feet on the ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Peace be still. Thank you, Lord. Good evening. Come on in. I'm going to get started in maybe one more minute. Good evening, Sister Sue. How are you? Come on in. I hope everybody's doing good. Hi, Sister Mimi. Good evening. Awesome. I am excited about this word because I'm telling you it encouraged me for sure. God's word is sharp. We know it, especially as we implement it. It, it is just so good. It is good. Y'all pray for me in my house too. Please. I hear the baby downstairs. <laughs> But my mom is, is holding down the fort down there. Good evening, Sister Gloria. Hello, hello. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, definitely, please share so that way it can get out. This message um, is for, it's for everybody. It is for everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're good. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God. Lord, we invite your presence, Lord God, here on today, Lord God. We just thank you for your word, Lord God. We thank you for an opportunity, Lord God, to gather together, even virtually, Lord God. Lord God, Jesus, you can use us in so many different ways, Lord God, that, Lord God, that um, even virtually your power cannot be stopped, Lord God, Jesus. Lord God, I thank you for every facet, Lord God, Jesus, um, in, in which, Lord God, your word comes forth, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, Jesus, for obedience to the call, Lord. I thank you, Lord God. Help us to hear, Lord God, by the spirit of the Lord that is on the inside of us, Lord God, so we can have deeper revelation, Lord God. Lord God, revelation, help us to walk in the revelation that we take from this, that we take from your word, Lord God. And we just thank you so much for what you're going to do. We thank you for transformation. We thank you for deliverance, Lord God, because even the truth sets us free, Lord God, and we're guided by the spirit of truth, Lord God, your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, Sister Cersei. So this um, message is claim your inheritance. Claim your inheritance, y'all. I don't know if you've heard, but there is a, a, a wealth transfer. There is something that is going on in the spirit um, where, you know, God is, is truly wanting to pour out 
his spirit. He's truly wanting to uh, give us an abundance um, of wealth, you know, and which not just monetarily, but really wants us to um, utilize our spiritual gifts. He is increasing so many of us because he's wanting to use us uh, in a mighty way. He truly wants us, um, you know, to his glory to be revealed in us. So people know the God that we serve is real. You know, and I always say the spiritual realm is even more real than the physical realm, right? Because they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we're not just battling against flesh and blood. So there is, you know, the spiritual realm is, it is even more real than the physical realm, right? So what takes place it, it, many times, you know, things take place or things will take place in the spiritual realm first before it happens in the natural so what does this mean, right? What are we talking about? Claiming our inheritance because we do have an inheritance as we are kingdom citizens. We are uh, sons and daughters of the most high God, right? So why haven't we claimed our inheritance, right? So this message is for those that are like, okay, you know, like, all right, you're talking about an inheritance, right? You know, wouldn't you want to know about a promise that you have that has your name on it, right? That you haven't claimed yet. That is real. It is, it is very real. But it takes something. It takes something in order for you to claim it. So why haven't we claimed it yet? Or why aren't we walking in the promises of God? You know, we've been talking about different things over the past few weeks that can block us, that can create a barrier to us claiming that inheritance, walking in the promise, or prevent us from answering the call that God has on our lives. Because there is a book that is already written about you, Sister Sue, Sister Robinson, Sister Cersei, Sister Gloria, all of us. Like there is a book, me, there, all of us that are listening, there's a book that's already written about us. Because he said, I, I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. I know the plans that I have for you. So that means it's already been done, but we... We have to walk in it. We have to get in alignment with God by being plugged into him so that we can claim what is already predestined for you. Right? But it takes being plugged into God. So how do we claim it? And what does... I? So I looked up some scriptures about what the Bible says about inheritance. And it says... Um, there are a lot of scriptures about inheritance, but these are uh, four that I found that really stuck out to me as I was led. And Matthew 5 and 5 says, Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Let me say that again, because I read that a few times. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. There is another scripture that says, um, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. That's Psalms 37 and 29. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell on it forever. That's the land. But it says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So there's something about meek that stands out to me because they're going to inherit the earth. The earth, right? Right, okay. Proverbs 13 and 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. So sometimes we're thinking, man, you know, I see, you know, this unrighteous person or this person of the world seems to have it better. But God is saying, hold up. And according to Proverbs 13 and 22, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. But we have to get into an alignment and come into an agreement with God's word that there is something that has your name on it that is waiting for you to claim it. But it's going to require something from you. First Corinthians 2 and 9 says, but as it is written, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. That is good, y'all, because if, we, if you can dream, which all of us can dream and we can imagine things. But God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we know that his ways are higher than our ways, as high as the heavens are above the earth. We know that scripture. Right? That means if you can think something, just imagine what he has in store for you is so much better. That even if your plan, come on, because sometimes we can get discouraged. 
because our plan doesn't go the way that we want it to. I was even speaking to, you know, a few clients, you know, during this week and it, myself included. Sometimes it's like, man, we have something that is planned, you know, but um, it doesn't happen in accordance in, in according to uh, how we wanted it to. And then we can become so easily discouraged. Like, man, I thought this was going to happen. And sometimes we create all of these um, different um, negative conclusions about how well, maybe it wasn't meant to be or it's not for us or or whatever the case is. But 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 what if God's plan is 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 greater, right? And it is. It is. Right? And also the enemy wants to plant seeds of doubt. He wants us to be discouraged. And wants you to think that the inheritance isn't for you. He wants us to maintain a certain mindset that um, that settles into like a generational pattern, right? And I'll get that. And I'll share some examples of that later, right? Generational patterns or generational curses. But come on, we know that the curse breaker is here, right? Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on, All right? So, what makes us eligible to even receive the inheritance in the first place? Well, being born again. Right. Being a child of God who has accepted Jesus as Lord, you know, accepted God into our hearts. Right. But that is a prerequisite. But it's not it. It's not all that we have to do, because we can even see that with the children of Israel. They, they were chosen. Come on. How many times did God say, you know, these are my chosen people. I have set them apart. These are my people. These are my people. But because of their mindset, their mindset didn't align with him saying these are my people. They didn't stand out as they should have being, you know, the peculiar people that he had called them to be. And they kept getting yoked up with the wrong folks. Right. But what God said is, you know, he told Abraham, you know, that he's going to be the father of many nations. And, and, you know, that became that that came that happened. Right. Because we know his word doesn't return void. And he said, I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to take them to a land that flows with milk and honey. So it's something that they hadn't even seen yet. But he said it in his word. Right. So many of us were hearing about God's promises. We hear about it during Bible study. You know, we hear about it when we're reading our Bibles at home, right? When we read the word or uh, when we're turning our gospel music on in the cars, we're hearing, we're hearing, right? Or when we go to church on Sundays, we're hearing about the word. So we hear a lot, but how can we begin to take that to the next level? So we're not just in the prerequisite phase, right? Right? Because if I just take my prerequisite courses in, in college, but I don't take, you know, do the work, you know, to progress along the way, I'm not going to claim my degree. Come on, right? So how can we take it to the next level? Somebody say next level. You know, I want to level up. James 1 and 22. James chapter 1, 22 to 25 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man. He is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror and then walks away and forgets what he looks like. But the one who looks into the perfect law of liberty, God's perfect law of liberty. Come on, because we are saved by grace and who the son sets free is free indeed. So the person that looks into the perfect law of liberty and perseveres, being not just a hearer of the word, but a doer who acts. Come on, because now we put action to the word. He will be blessed. He is going to claim something in his doing. He's going to walk, right? He's going to walk in accordance to the path that God has given him. And he's going to claim. We're going to claim when we are doers. I like this translation right here. New Living Translation says, but don't just listen to God's word. 
but you must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself, you walk away, and you forget what you look like. Come on. But that's because we forget what we look like, meaning we forget who we are in Christ because we haven't applied the word. And how will I know if it works unless I work it? Come on, somebody. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and you don't forget what you heard, and you don't forget who you are in Christ, no matter what somebody said about you, no matter what the naysayers say, if you don't forget who you are in Christ, and you keep on moving, and you don't look to the left, and you don't look to the right, come on, and you keep on moving, God is going to bless you for it, and you're going to claim something. Come on, we like incentives, y'all. Well, I get my kids to do things when I tell them they're going to get something. God is telling you that there is something for you. That is, come on, if you, that if you trust in him, if you fix your face like a flint, you are not going to be put to shame. So many of us are missing the blessings because sometimes we stockpile. Come on. Sometimes we stockpile on information, but we haven't put it to use yet. Right? Or sometimes when we do put it to use, it can be without discernment. Like with the children of Israel, they're getting yoked up with the wrong people. And, so, and suddenly, you know, they're getting further away from the promise. Now there's procrastination. Come on. Because of all the fear, you know, feeling like they got to fit in. We're, we're helping or maybe we're serving, but we're serving the wrong folks. Or sometimes we're serving with the wrong attitude. Or sometimes we're serving with unforgiveness. We don't, our whole heart is not in it. Sometimes we can be fearful of change even. And we stick with what is familiar. With the same folks. What is that saying? Birds of the same feather fly together or flock together. You know, or sometimes we have the same spending habits, right? Come on. I'm preaching to myself right now. Right now, I'm saying that I'm not claiming that for me right now, but I'm saying before that's what I would do. I've shared that uh, I've shared one example with you all. Um, there is this one lady who uh, who talks about how even our money mindset is like a blueprint that can be passed down from generation to generation. And she realized that she would do the same thing that her mom did. Uh, and her mom would constantly say, oh, money burns a hole in my wallet. And she would say the same thing. And that's exactly what was happening. So some of the things are passed down, but and it's just familiar. It's just familiar. Even not forgiving and handling situations in a certain way can be the familiar way of doing it. That suddenly we're like, oh, you know, I'm tired of being the bigger person. Oh, it's harder to be the bigger person. When actually that is what will set us free when we forgive. Then our hearts can be opened up. And truly, God, God works in the hearts of man, right? But God doesn't want us to just talk about what we're going to do or even share things with the wrong people, right? But truly, we need to prophesy over ourselves. We need to speak the right language, just like we talked about last week. It's time to prophesy God's promise over us and walk in it. We talked about there, you know, there being power in words. But no longer, y'all, no longer will we be or no longer will we let familiarity fool us out of our blessing. Right. I hope this is landing. Come on. I hope this is making sense. So no longer are we going to let familiarity Fool us out of our blessing. So I looked up the meaning of meekness. So what does meekness mean? So this is what I found. Meekness is a controlled strength that puts God first. A controlled strength. So it means that, okay, someone who's meek is, you know, emotionally, emotionally regulated. Because God gave us emotion. He made us, he knows how we are, but he made us in a way in which we have to be codependent upon him because he knows the plans that he has for us, not, you know, plans to prosper us, not harm us, 
right? But if I'm thinking with my, you know, I've shared this, not, it's not just an analogy, but our, the way we work, the way our neurology is, is to keep us safe, right? So it's a good thing when I touch something hot, but my brain remembers that and it's like, well, don't touch that hot thing again. Alert, alert, don't touch that hot thing again. But your brain will work in the same way to protect your ego when somebody has said an insult about you. It's like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to put myself out there again. But when putting yourself out there is what is going to push you to the promise. But what if your brain is telling you not to? That's why it's like, trust in the Lord. Focus on me. Don't look at the faces of men. Come on. So it's a controlled strength. Right? I'm emotionally regulated because I plug into God. I'm walking in the gospel of peace. Come on, the shoes. That's the armor, right? That's the armor that, we, that we've been talking about. Yes, Sister Sue. The scripture says, acknowledge God in all your ways and he's going to direct your path. So meekness is about submitting to God. Commit your ways to the Lord and your plans are going to be established. Paul even said it this way. It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me. And God, I live and God, I move and God, I have my being, my God. So meekness should not be confused with being cowardice. No, or weak. Because that is. Maybe the urban definition, because when I put that in, I had to look up like a biblical definition. And I had to look at it and understand it through the life of Moses, because Moses actually, he's regarded as the meekest man on earth. All right, so it's not, it's not, it's, you know, not being afraid. Well, you know, truly Jesus, I'd say, is the meekest man. But, you know, scripture says, okay, Moses is regarded as the meekest. He gave himself over for God to be used. So it's not being afraid to stand up. It's knowing God's word and standing on it. No matter what's going on in society. No matter what's going on in the world. It's having courage to trust in God. And knowing that God has your back at the end of the day. I was going through something even in this past week. And many times, like when we, we're going through something or we're feeling, you know, some spiritual warfare happening. Or what, you know, we talked about how the enemy likes to attack our minds. That's what he even did since the beginning. You know, where I was getting into my feelings about something. And then what immediately dropped into my spirit is Romans 8 and 31. Miriam, Miriam, he got, you know, he's like getting my attention. And y'all, I had to, once he dropped this verse in my scripture, I had to keep saying it to myself multiple times a day because we need to remember. It's an issue when we forget and we don't implement. When we go into the mirror and then we, we do nothing with it. We hear it and do nothing with it. And then we forget who we are. But he said, Miriam, hold on. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who should be, what shall we then say? Sometimes we're trying to, what, you know, ah, man, like, why can't this person understand me? Or, you know, man, like, goodness, you know, I wish people would accept me. Or, oh, man, like, I, I'm, I'm so hurt because of what this person did. But, he said, stop trying to rationalize it. Stop trying to figure out something that is not meant for you to figure out. He said, what shall we then say to these things? This is the answer. Instead of being stuck in analysis paralysis about what happened, he, he said, instead, answer it with this. When your mind wants to go into it, when your, your, your wheels start turning, answer it with this. If God be for us, who can be against us? So allow, it's allowing... You know, meekness is allowing yourself to be molded into God's word. So that way you're focused on the promise. You're, you're focused on claiming your inheritance. You're focused on the call that he has on your life. And that ele being meek is being molded by God. That is elevation as well. 
So in him, we have an inheritance. We've been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That's Ephesians 1, 11. Right? So what is at the core of being meek? I said this before, and that is being molded. It is literally being molded. Jeremiah 18 and 4 says, And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, y'all. It was spoiled. And he had to rework it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do so. He's like, well, no, this is good for me to not just leave it spoiled, but as it's committed to my hands, I'm going to rework it. <laughs> into another vessel and it's good for me to do it i'm not going to leave it or forsake it it's good for me to fix it right jeremiah 18 and 6 says oh house of israel come on body of christ he's saying everybody in the chat right oh house of israel can i not do with you as this potter has done if the potter can recognize that something that is spoiled that needs to be fixed and it's good for him to do, what more can I do for you? Come on. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Come on. It doesn't matter how broke, how busted and disgusted you have been. I have been. It doesn't matter. You have a new name in God. You are a new creature in him. And people may not get it. Folks try to make sense of it because that's that's how our minds work. We try to figure things out. You folks may even call you brand new because you surpass their expectations that you were never meant to fit into the first place, right? If his thoughts are higher than your own thoughts, come on, y'all. Then we're not even supposed to fit into people's expectations. Or even your own, especially if it's limited. And, we, you know, we've been talking about the spirit of offense. Y'all, many times what offends us, like say somebody says something, right, about me, and I get offended. It's probably because I, I fought it first. Like it was in me already. Because the scripture says, again, such as a man thinketh, so is he. It doesn't say such as this person, Mr brickhead whatever it doesn't say such as this person thinketh so am i it says such as you think if so you are but sometimes we make it about other people because we made an idol out of them does that make sense another analogy that uh, really helped me to understand that is say um hypo hypothetically say i feel like i'm not a, a good parent and, you know, this is some, say this is something I thought about, right? And then suddenly, you know, on, on one of those days where I'm feeling that way, right, somebody notices that I forgot to put a, a jacket on my child or whatever the case is. And then they're like, oh, you forgot to put a jacket on your child? Oh, my goodness, what are you thinking? And then I get offended. Well, actually, the reason why I got offended is because I, it was already in me. It was already something I, it was already something I had devised in my heart or in my mind, such as a man thinketh in his heart, so was he. And that is what led to my offense. But I thought at first. But say if somebody, you know, say I don't know how to play Uno. And I start playing the game Uno. And then suddenly somebody's like, Miriam, you are terrible at playing Uno. You are the world's worst Uno player. Stop it, you know, because you just are terrible. I don't want you on my team. But say I don't even care. Like, like I know it's my first time. I, I never, I didn't have... A, a predestined thought. I didn't have a, a preconception about, you know, like I, I didn't care about being a good Uno player. It's going to be water off my back because like it wasn't in my heart already. It's like, okay, <laughs> like it's my first time playing Uno. All right. So it just, it goes to say that we are responsible for what we think. We are responsible for aligning ourselves with what God says and who God says we are instead of putting that responsibility on other people who are not meant to understand it in the first place right you know so it's 
it's really time for us to come out of the box. Not that somebody else placed us in, but that many times we end up placing ourselves in. Even when God was having that conversation with Moses, right? And Moses is like, well, what if they don't even believe me, God? You know, what, who, you know, what should I say? He said, say that you know, I am sent you. I am sent you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation, from generation to generation. So in, in, in uh, October 19th, 2022, 729 p.m., generation to generation, the great I am sent you here in this chat. The great I am wants you to hear this message and do something with it. The great I am wants you to know that you can't put him in a box. So we can't we can't put him in a box. We cannot put limitations on God. Right? And God is saying, don't limit what I can do through you. That's what I believe God is saying. Somebody, just decree over yourself. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because we're made in his image. Right, And he's created us so that we can commune with him and consult with him. So now we can do this because of Jesus Christ, you know, who fulfilled the law. By grace, we are saved. He commended his love toward us. He loved us so much that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And sometimes we're still living in condemnation, but he's like, no. There's therefore now no condemnation to those who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. He wants to have relationship with us and not religion. Amen, Sister Farley. You know, I even heard it put this way. Let's stop letting people drive the vehicle that God has given us to drive. You know, so while we're letting them drive it, you know, they're running into trees and rocks and all kinds of bumps and stuff like that. You know, but let's let's sit in the vehicle. Come on, the temple that God has given us while allowing him to direct us. Come on, the Holy Spirit, the, the, the GPS, the internal God processing system. And it's not to say that we're not going to hit things along the way because he said, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. But tribulation worketh patience and you develop skill and you develop mastery because you can't microwave mastery. Right. So there, there are going to be some accidents, but by being connected to God, we take the vehicle to the manufacturer. Right. Because we're not our own. We got to go back to the manufacturer. I can't understand who I am through mankind. You know, but. God has used prophets. Y'all, prophecy has changed my life. It has changed my life. God has, you know, spoken through his people concerning me. And it bear witness with my spirit about things, about great exploits that he wants me to do. And even God will speak to you through his word and confirm things for you. So we have to consult with him. We got to take the vehicle, the temple of the Holy Spirit Come on, the vehicle back to the manufacturer. You know, so it doesn't matter, again, the mistakes in the past. If I come with a contrite heart, it doesn't matter how misunderstood I have been. Oh, what if they misunderstand me? You know, what if I got, you know, my speech, he said, my, I, I got a speech impediment, Moses said. It doesn't matter. God is, I made your mouth, right? Who makes man's mouth? I made your mouth. Let the master do his miraculous work through you. Come on. I, I want, I like, whoo. Come on. If, if it doesn't have, if the things he's calling you to do doesn't have your knees buckling, it ain't big enough then. It's okay that the knees are buckling. It is okay. Because he's saying it's not by your might, but by my spirit anyway. So some of us may have had some bruises, but don't give up. 
because he wants to make us whole. He wants to establish us. Uh, 1 Peter 5 and 10 says, and after you have suffered a while, because we suffer, after you have suffered a while, the God of all grace who called you unto eternal glory in Christ Jesus will restore you and he will confirm you. I don't need the validation or the affirmation from a thousand people. Come on. I just need the trusted folks that maybe that God has put in my life to pray with me and confirm with me and to touch and agree with me. But he has the final say, whose report are we going to believe? I'm not going to re re believe the report of the spies that came back, right? That, that, that looked at all, you know, the Canaanites land and all the ites land and said, oh, it's too big for us. I'm not going to make the situation my idol. I'm going to seek God for the solution and focus on that. Come on, somebody say, uh -uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on the solution that God gave me. I'm going to do the solution. I'm going to be a doer of the solution, a doer of the word and not a hearer of fear, a hearer of somebody trying to sway, you know, persuade me out of it. I'm not even going to listen to my negative thoughts. I'm not going to listen to what the enemy has to say. I'm going to let glory be revealed. Glory come forth. Come on, so just prophesy over yourself. Come on, glory come forth. Somebody, there's this one study that says we think that like 6,000 thoughts a day. If I'm thinking that much, y'all, no wonder it says pray without ceasing. My God, because what thoughts am I circulating in my mind? And then, come on, we know just like in the Garden of Eden, in perfection, you still have the enemy there trying to plant seeds of doubt, right? So I got to pray in my mind, even, you know, if, if I'm in my car, you know, Lord, I am who you say I am. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know the plans that you have for me and it's plans to prosper me, not harm me. And I need to keep telling myself that every time I'm feeling fearful and it's okay that I feel fearful. But God is saying, hold on, but, but Lord, you haven't given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So I'm going to do it anyways. Come on. So your labor is not in vain. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't, so I'm not going to give up. Say, I'm not going to give up. And we know the labor, come on, doesn't feel good. That is not the thing that I look forward to when I was having contractions. I'm like, okay, I guess it's time. When that OBG said, you ready to push? I said, no, I need some more time. She's like, no, you're 10 centimeters. And then the heart rate is going down. The, the, the cord might be around his neck. And I, that, I mean, goodness, that really took me into a tailspin. I started crying even more. But then it's when I started thinking that somebody else depends on me to push. Come on, Holy Spirit, help me preach. Somebody depended on me to push because my pushing was going to be a part of their deliverance. I stopped thinking about my pain and I started to push my child out. And thank God there wasn't even a cord around his neck. And I'm like, you just told me that so I can push. But some things I need to hear that... My purpose is not just about me. It's for somebody else, too. Come on, somebody. Come on. I hope this is landing and this is making sense. Push. Come on, push. Push that. God is giving us a baby that he wants us to take care of. And, and just because we may get insults or different things may happen, don't, what is the saying? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? And then when you push and that baby comes out and you give birth to the purpose, even though you may have fear, you trust in God with all your heart. Cause he said, it's gonna take all, it's gonna take all for you to get there and claim what is yours, it's yours, but you still have to do something. Come on. I know I'm not just preaching to myself. My God. So before we know, you know, here's another scripture in uh, chapter uh, Romans chapter eight. It says, before we know that even the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. Romans eight nineteen creation waits an eager expectation for the revelation of the sons of God. When are we going to re realize that we are part of God's sonship, which means 
Come on, I'm going to glean from the ministers that God has given me. I'm going to glean from Pastor T. I'm going to glean from my mentors, right? I'm going to glean. I'm, I'm going to study to show myself approved. And then I'm going to answer the call because the mantle is going to be pushed down to me. The baton is being pushed down to you. You are called. Everyone in this chat is called. You are all members of the body of Christ. So being meek has nothing to do with being passive, but it has everything to do with being molded. So no longer can we compromise. No longer can we compromise our cultivation because of discouragement over a situation or because of what happened before. You might have been burnt before, but you're not defeated. The enemy is defeated in Jesus is Lord. Come on. So if, if we if we come into agreement with a defeated mindset, what happens? We will sell ourselves short of the inheritance. We will sell ourselves short of the promise. And that's exactly what Esau did. And God called him wicked. He sold his birthright, y'all, from some oxtail stew and some beans and rice. And as good as it sounds, I, I don't want my hunger to steal me out of my harvest. Come on. What may feel good in the moment may not be good for me. I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to resist the enemy. I'm not going to listen to those thoughts of self-doubt. I'm not going to listen to what naysayers have to say. I'm going to trust in God and I'm going to, come on, I'm going to be violent about it. I'm, I'm going to be assertive about it. Come on. Come on. God is calling us to do it on a new level. He wants to renew our minds. He said, delight yourself in me and I'll give you the desires of your heart. So there, and there's more than enough for everybody in this chat. Come on, for the body of Christ. We don't even have to compete. <laughs> right? We don't got to trick nobody. We don't have to do it the world's way because there is God's way. And in doing it God's way, there's an acceleration. And then, you know, we'll have the discernment to know about the time and the seasons as well. Because there are certain seasons for, for different things, for sowing and then reaping the harvest. There are certain seasons. So we'll be more aware of that. Okay, so this is a season where I'm supposed to write the book. Okay, got, got you, God. All right, this is a season where I'm supposed to go and speak to these people. All right, this is a season where I'm supposed to go volunteer at this uh, food pantry. Okay, got you. This is a season, right? There's a season for different things that God will take us through. But we have to be connected to him and walk in faith so we can be in the right place at the right time and be used by God. Because even evangelizing to the cashier at the grocery store is purpose. There's a place for everybody. So God is reshaping our capacity. He's stretching it. You know, and then finally, there are three aspects to meekness. And there's probably more, but here's three that I um, collected. So part of being meek, again, we know is being molded by God. It's submitting, submitting to God. Even if you have an internal conflict, because we know Moses had an internal conflict. Oh, what about my mouth? Oh, I don't got my makeup on. Come on. You know, oh, my nails. I don't know. <laughs> my hair is not done. My God. Right? Sometimes we have, I've never done this before. We've been asked to do things, but it's like, oh, I don't know. I've never done this before. It just, oh my God, there's one saying that just came to my mind uh, by a, a great orator who says, uh, you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. And God's word says, I will make your name great. But it, it, because you're allowing glory, his glory to be revealed. There's greatness in that. But it all depends on what you focus on. Because we know the children of Israel, once they made that, that golden calf, that's what they started worshiping. That's what started, they started being consumed by. So they took their eyes off of God, right? Now they're worshiping some, some image or false God. It says they changed their glory to that of grass, <laughs> to, to an ox that eats grass. They changed the glory that could have been revealed in them, come on, to, to an ox that eats grass instead of God's glory being revealed. And God is, come on, he wants us to truly see and experience glory, his glory, 
being revealed through us, glory come forth. So it doesn't matter what limitation you think you have. He wants all. He said, who made, who made your mouth? Who made you? He is the manufacturer of this vehicle. So it's, you know, allowing God to upgrade us. Come on, say, I want an upgrade. I'm going I'm to let God upgrade me. Upgrade me, God. However you want to say it. Leaning not into our own understanding. Because when we do, it is sabotage. <laughs> it is. We need godly wisdom. And thank God even for redemption. Because even an example of meekness, as as many mistakes as Samson made, come in, we make mistakes. We're not perfect. Me and my husband were just talking about that, I think this morning or sometime today. Like, goodness, Samson, you didn't pick up on Delilah's schemes, right? And, and, and come on, we got to be aware of the enemy's tactics. It's the same thing, just different faces. My mom always tells me, you know, my grandma will say the enemy just changes faces. We're not battling against flesh and blood. It's like, man, Samson. But even in his disobedience, right? Because he came with a contrite heart. Right? They had him captive. And he said, Lord, use me this one last time. Even in his disobedience, he ended up winning the greatest battle against the Philistines. Come on, God is merciful. He is merciful. Imagine what God is going to do with your obedience. Come on. In his disobedience, he won the greatest battle against the Philistines. Imagine what he's going to do with your obedience. All right, another aspect is faith. Because, come on, faith that God has redeemed you. Faith that you don't have to walk in the cycle of sin. Faith that God has your back. What shall we then say to these things? Not I'm going to, you know, I'm going to become a hermit because of what happened to me in the past. No, but if God is for me, who can be against me? If God has a vision, he's going to give you the provision. Faith that you are not a statistic. Faith that you're not damaged goods. Come on. Faith that you are more than a conqueror. Say, decree, I am more than a conqueror. Faith that you are royal. Faith that God has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And some of us are trying to get rid of the enemy first. But actually, he, he's like, hold on, the enemy needs to be there because I'm preparing a table before you in the presence of them. Trust that I have your back. And you just use discernment. Be wise as a serpent, but gentle what, as a dove. He's preparing the table for you. It's time to take your seat at the table that he has prepared for you. That is a part of your inheritance. 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, but you are a chosen people here with the spirit of the Lord. I am, I am a chosen person. Sister Mimi, you're chosen. Sister Kathy, you're chosen. Everybody, Sister Doss, everybody in this chat is ch you're chosen. And being chosen means saying yes, because many are the call, but few are chosen. And so what's the difference in saying yes? You are chosen. You are royal. A ro what? A royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. You mean I don't got to live in poverty, God? No, I'm, I'm royal. That's a contradiction to say that, oh, you know, it's not meant for me to have money. It's not meant for me to have the position. It's not meant for me to do the presentation. No, you are royal. You are chosen. You are a holy nation. You are God's special possession that, that you may declare the praises of him. Come on. Because if I have a certain mindset of what that Lodabar mindset, when he was like, oh, you know, there's what wretched dog that I am that you would want to take me back to the palace. That's what he was telling um, uh, David, right? Jonathan's son. He's like, no, get rid of that Lodabar mindset. Because when people see you, I want them to see me and how good of a God that I am. He said, what, what did he say in, in the verse? You, you know, you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. What more can I do for you? Come on. And then lastly, it takes courage and strength. That is a part of meekness. Meekness is not coward, coward, being cowardly. It's not. 
But what did God tell Moses? He said, take what's in your hand. Y'all, he took what's in his hand, and when he threw it down, initially it turned into a snake, and Moses ran. I was like, I would have did the same thing. I can't blame you. <laughs> and right? But when we think about it, right, he's like, take what's in your hand, because I've already given you something. Right? He took it, turned it into a snake. He ran away, but he came back. Just make sure you come back and pick it up. He said, pick it up by the tail. Come on. We got to get assertive. We got to be sure in who we are in Christ. We got to use the authority because Jesus came back and took the keys. He got the keys so we can use the keys, not put the keys on, on the sofa, not put the keys somewhere and forget that we have the keys. Come on. You are kingdom citizens. We're kingdom citizens. And he took back the keys. He took back. He paid the ultimate price and took back the keys. He said you were bought with the price and he paid the ultimate price. So don't let nobody else assign you your worth. Don't put limits on what God can do. Right? It's sometimes what we have in our hand, right? He put it down and turned to a snake. He ran. Sometimes the testimony, we're afraid to share the testimony because we don't know if people are going to accept it or not. We don't know what they're going to say. Sometimes we're afraid to share the dream that God has given us. Well, you know, we don't need to share it with the wrong people, but we're afraid to do the dream that God has given us because we don't know if it's going to work or not. Just like he ran initially, but he had to come back and grab it. So come on, pick back up. Come on, even just do it. Pick back up what you what you drop. Pick up your testimony. Because that testimony is going to be somebody else's deliverance. The, the enemy is defeated. We got to remember that we're not defeated by sharing the story. We're not defeated by writing the book. We're not defeated by inventing a product. We're not defeated by sharing. Come on. The enemy is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony. Pick it back up. Somebody said, I'm picking it back up. The testimony is about what God delivered you from and what he set you free from so you can claim what is already predestined to you. Come on, I hope this is making sense. Come on, because I, y'all, it, it, it's helping me right now. It is helping me. We got to preach to ourselves. We got to minister to ourselves. We got to let that revelation Sit in on a, on, come on, in the spirit. I'm picking it back up. That's right. I'm picking it back up. I'm picking up the promise. I'm claiming what is mine. I'm sitting at the table that God has prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. I'm not going to run away. Instead, I'm just going to, come on, I'm going to fix my face like a, like a flint. It doesn't matter what people say. Because God wants us to perfect us in, in his love. He wants us to love. In spite of what people do. It doesn't matter. He wants us to love. And God is still working on me. I'm like, God, I just want to be so full of your love that I'm not operating through fear. But I'm not going to let fear stop me either. It's okay if the knees are buckling. Come on. It's okay if they're doing this. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Brother Banks, picking it back up. Picking it up, Sister Robinson. That's right. Amen. So I just hope that that bless somebody, that helps somebody. Because the truth sets us free. So just y'all continue even after this throughout the week, decree over yourself, declare over yourself who you are in Christ. Say yes to the things of God. Of course, if somebody comes to you with something, you know, acknowledge God in all your ways and he will direct your path. Let God mold you. He is the master potter. He will reshape in you. It doesn't matter where you come from. Okay, come on. Esther came from the hood. I say she did because what she she was a foster like I mean a sister like she lost her parents. She was raised by an uncle, and where did she end up in the in the castle? And God used her in a mighty way. Even though the laws were set up against her, even though she wasn't supposed to speak unless spoken to. Come on. But when we trust in God. Miracles happen. There's a claim. There is an inheritance with your name on it. Dear Lord, I thank you so much. Oh, sorry. If y'all can just, if the moderator can put the link in the chat, amen. Put the link uh, for uh, sowing a seed in, in the chat. If you want to sow a seed into the ministry, amen, because God will rebuke the devourer. 
for our sake. I sowed a seed um, uh, the other day. And I'm not saying that to boast, but I was cheerful because I'm like, God, I want you to rebuke the devourer. You know, I don't want anything eating up my finances. You know, God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So if somebody can put that in the chat. Uh, and then um, there's um, service on Sunday at 10 a.m. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for this word, Lord. I pray that it falls on good ground, Lord God. We thank you that it, it has already, Lord. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for deeper revelation, Lord God. I thank you for transformation. Holy Spirit, I thank you for being my comforter and my counselor, Lord. You said, what shall we then say to these things? Who, if God be for us, who can be against us? Thank you, Lord God, for the unadulterated truth, Lord God. Because in truth, we have freedom, Lord. I thank you for setting us free, Lord God. And that we, Lord God, in you will re renew our minds on a daily basis, Lord God. Let us not give up, Lord God, but let us go into overtime when it comes to understanding who we are in you. When it comes to using those keys over and over again, let us not forget where the keys are, Lord God. Let us take the keys to ourselves, Lord God, and put on our spiritual armor, so that we can be ready to withstand the enemy on the evil day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for deeper revelation, a burden to pray for our families, a burden, Lord God, to pray for souls, Lord God, to be saved, a burden, Lord God, Jesus, to truly, Lord God, be a part of your sonship, Lord God, for we are your sons, we are your daughters, Lord God. I thank you for the calling on everybody's life in this chat, Lord God. I thank you for higher levels in you, deeper revelation in you. No weapon formed against us shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name, Lord God. I pray I bind all backlash and retaliation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all, please pray for me. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, and I, and I appreciate it. Please touch and agree. Um, and let's pray for each other. I love you all. Y'all, Jesus loves you even more. God bless you. NTG on Sunday at 10 a.m. Be blessed. Bye-bye.